Today, we're going to be talking about how to stop blank values from appearing in tables and matrices in Power BI, just like they are in this table right here. So with that said, let's jump into Power BI and let's get working. So here's the table visual that we're trying to fix. As you can see, we have a blank value right here in shoot type, and we have a blank value right here in units returned. The first step in fixing this is understanding why it's happening. In this case, this data model is set up exactly as you're told to set it up, in a star schema with one singular fact table and then multiple dimension tables. We have a blank value appearing in the shoe type because there's a shoe type ID in our fact table that does not exist in our dimension table where we're pulling the shoe type description out of. We have a blank value appearing in the units returned measure because if we switch over here to table view, you'll see that we have null or blank values in the units returned column. But there is a value populated in the unit sold column, which means whenever a table or a matrix has both a column that's summing units sold and a column that's summing units returned, we'll get a blank value for units returned. Now, I have two measures pulled over into this table. I have one that's just summar summarizing units returned, and I have one that's summarizing units sold. My first instinct in trying to fix this shoe type value and these blanks in the units returned is to use a coalesce function. So right here, I have units returned coalesce comma zero. And what this will do is if this first value is blank, it will return zero. So let's take a look at what happens when we go ahead and we drag this into the data model. So I'm gonna drag it on over and uh-oh, it just really duplicated all of our values. Why is this happening? Well, when you're using a Power BI table or matrix and you're using dimensional tables to pull over descriptions that are joined to a fact table, Power BI is going to show a row in that table or matrix for every single value that's available. When we use this coalesce function, we're essentially saying, hey, if units returned is blank, return zero which means there's now a value for every single combination of shoe name description and shoe type description, which means we get a row for every single value. So this method is not gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove that measure from this table. And as you can see, it'll collapse back down. Now, here's another measure that I have prepared instead using an if statement. I'm saying if units returned is blank, return zero, else units returned. Let's see what happens when I drag that over. And as you can see, it's the same problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove it. Now I've gone ahead and I've prepared a similar measure for shoe type that should fix it. So let's go ahead and let's drag that in. When we drag that in, uh-oh, you notice right here, right? We tried to populate that blank value with an unknown, but now we get a row for every single combination of shoe type and shoe name. So this isn't gonna work either. Now you might be starting to give up hope. Well, don't worry. There's a way that we can fix this and have our table displayed correctly. But we're gonna have to take two different approaches. Fixing the dimensional column in the, in the table is going to be a little bit more difficult. So let's start with fixing the units returned, which is just simply a measure. And we're gonna do that with visual calcs. If you've watched any of my other videos on visual calcs, you'll know that they operate with the values from the measure, not in the broader context of the data model. This allows us to essentially use that same QLA statement without generating a ton of extra rows because it will only operate on just the rows that are currently displayed in the visual. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So to replace that with a visual calc that returns a zero, I'm gonna to go to the home tab. I'm then going to click new visual calculation and I'm gonna type coalesce and my calculation is gonna be units returned, right? Uh, else zero and I'll close that. And as you can see, when I click this right here, right, it's now returning a zero. I'm gonna hide the units returned column and then I'm going to click this edit button back here and I'm going to title this units returned. 
and it won't like having the same name. So like, for example, if I click this check mark box right here, it'll title it units returned one. So I'm going to go edit my name in the visual over here to units returned two, <laughs> and then go back over here and I'll go edit and I'll change this to units returned. Now, visual calcs, you have to set their formatting by going into the formatting pane, going into properties, going into data format, selecting the visual calcs, in this case, units returned, and setting it right here to a whole number. So as you can see, I now have a zero populating in instead of a blank. This shoe type value is now going to be a little bit more difficult to fix. Ideally, you would address it at your data source. So if you're pulling this dimensional table in from a SQL so source, you would go ahead and you'd get the extra dimension added in. However, I know that's not always possible. So we're gonna use a calculated column in order to fix it. This is not an ideal solution. If you read online, people really dislike calculated columns, but if you have to fix this in Power BI, this is an okay way to do it. So let's go into Power BI. Let's enter in to the table view, and then let's create our calculated column. So here I am in table view. I've got here by clicking here. I'm then going to click new column right here, and I'm going to title this column shoe type disk. I'm going to go OK. I'm going to go related, right? And then I will go dim shoe type. Now, if I click this, you'll notice we still have the blank right here. But if I now go coalesce right here and go value right here and go unknown and close that, click the checkbox, you'll notice I now have a value for every single shoe type. I can now simply switch back over here, delete out shoe type from the dimensional table, and then bring in my shoe calculated column shoe type right over here. And as you can see, I now have all of these values. I can just simply remove this to shoe type. And just like that, here we are. We now have a table value that used to have two blanks, but now has none at all. So if you enjoyed this video and are interested in business intelligence, please subscribe, give it a like and a comment. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. At least it's it's a weekend right now.